We're in day four. We'll bring you all the wrap up. Today we have a discussion with the police and uh, we want you to note down the concerns you have. Since the first, second, third days, what have been some of the concerns you have and, and, and what do you think has gone right with the lockdown and the way the security personnel are implementing this? That will help us a lot as we have this uh, interactivity. Uh, DSP Efiatinge will be in the studio. She is a public relations boss for the Ghana Police Service Accra region. We will be joined by uh, officials also of the police from the Ashanti region. We'll take a look at, at, at comprehensively what we need to know uh, currently. But let's get you at speed with the current numbers as far as the infection rates are related. In Accra, we have 174, Ashanti 9, Upper West 1, Northern Turn and Easting. And all these taken from the briefing uh, from Wednesday, also giving us a total of 195. We have 38 discharge, 3 under treatment, 80 deaths, 5 and under surveillance, 106. Well, that is the Ghana situation. Now let's go to um, the world side and through the Johns Hopkins University um, Global Cases by the Center for System Science and Engineering School or College at Johns Hopkins University. We're able to bring to you all the related conversation about the total numbers we have worldwide. And it looks like these are the numbers. We have... Uh, 937,000 cases and still rising across the globe. It speaks uh, to the related issues as to why the United States, for example, is having a hard time to clamp down on this. And so far, it looks like the deaths uh, keep rising. And uh, we have total deaths so far being 47,000 worldwide. Italy is leading with some 13,000. Uh, we also do have Spain with some uh, 9,300. Uh, France with 4,000. Uh, and then when it comes to the related deaths from China, it still remains at, at 3,100. Uh, but Iran, uh, we have um, the United Kingdom, the United States, uh, particularly related issues of death in New York City being a concern for the Trump administration. So we, we have all these, and uh, it, it looks like this is where we have the situation. But we still do have some, some total uh, number of people who have recovered from the disease, particularly when we want to focus on the United States of America. In New York City, we have 1,000 deaths so far, uh, but there have been a number of deaths as well. The, the total in excess of some 5,000, we're told, and unassigned uh, deaths in New York also remain at 580. There are others that have been recorded in Washington, State, in Michigan, in Louisiana, in, in, um, in Illinois, uh, New Jersey, in California, and others uh, keep rising when it comes to the issue of the United States. But look, there have been concerns being raised by some states that it looks like the rate of infection could mean that they could have some shortages uh, within the next week for some testing kits, some PPEs, etc. Even though Trump that said the Trump administration has given some assurances to those federal government that they'll do, uh, those state governments that they'll do some good by them. Now let's go to the world map and try to aggregate um, the figures and then do some extrapolations when we move forward. Look, when you, when you, when you come to North America, it's fully in a red color and it, it speaks to the concerns that have been raised by the various states. And New York, uh, within the Philadelphia area seems to still dominate. If you get closer, you'll find Boston also up there and Philadelphia also uh, having all the related conversations when we, we come to how the various hospitals in those states are dealing with it. Uh, and so we have New York, Philadelphia, uh, we, we do have um, Providence, Boston is also up there, but across the country is all dotted with red. And uh, you go to the coasts uh, along San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, that will be in California. 
and these related issues keep being a concern. But uh, we'll see how the day goes as far as this. in Europe. There's uh, the UK, there's Holland, there's uh, Germany, there's France, and the usual suspects are still on. It's a, it's, it's a concern for the World Health Organization because these countries remain great global players in trade, but also multilateral donor support to many third world, if not developing countries. So if they are in dire straits, it will mean that countries such as ours ultimately will suffer. You do know that, for example, we have an annual budgetary support uh, up to over 60% for many of these countries, either in some loans or some grants or some bonds we may go and have on the markets uh, and other forms of some securitization over the period. And uh, I, I know that you all also had the briefing from our finance minister, Ken Oferiata, on all these. When we come to Africa, uh, apart from when the first cases were recorded, it looks like a number of countries now in Africa in the red. Um, still topping the figures. We do have South Africa. But it is when you move up, you go to Namibia, you have a case, you go to Mozambique, and in the capital, Maputo, um, they, they all are gearing up for all the related things that when it comes to the cases and how they're treating them. Uh, there's Gabon, there's the DRC or the Congo, and then you do have Cameroon, Nigeria. We have uh, Benin, Togo, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, almost every country in Africa uh, with a session of um, a chat. Uh, that uh, oh Chad seems to have a case I think so they have uh, one there so um, we'll see how it goes relatedly to all the concerns so all the concerns that have been raised okay right so these are the global perspective and how we can plot or allocate the figures to the cases that are being re reported uh, globally but if you want to get interactive please make sure you do so. Today, we have an interactive session with a number of experts. We have uh, the police, the security forces are on the ground, day four of lockdown, but three days would mean that all of us, as citizens, would have some concerns or may have observed some good thing about the lockdown. So we have uh, an interactive session with the police. If Fiatenge, she is a DSP, but the, the uh, PRO for the Accra region command of the Ghana Police Service. Uh, she will be joined by some officials of the police also in the Ashanti region, and we'll have a greater conversation. What we want you to know is to know them some concerns you have, some good things you've observed as well, and some perhaps uh, commendations or admonition you want to give to this whole lockdown rules and guidelines. Now, they are also in the studio to reaffirm or reiterate what the rules are as far as the engagement is for us citizens. So we all will put all these into a better perspective. We're going to have a cardiologist. Dr. Joseph Akama is a cardiologist, uh, has practiced in the United States of America for decades, but currently works with the Kolobu Teaching Hospital, has a private practice as well. She's a, he's a regular on the show. We're here to ask him questions. You know, a lockdown means that there's a lot of restriction for many people in these cities of uh, Accra, relatedly Tema and Kumasi. How do you exercise your heart? What kind of healthy living and wellness actions do you need to undertake? We also do have the Food and Drugs Authority. We have hoarded food. And of course, many of us are part of the reasons why we have the increment in the prices. How do we store food in such a way that we don't have illnesses being recorded, either by way of food poisoning, etc. The FDA is here to educate us. So, promises to be very interactive today, right here on the show. We have to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at um, about a few newspapers I have just in front uh, here with me. And uh, myself and Mamavi Oswabwaji will bring you the latest. Do stay with us. <laughs> 